All right, we are here at my outdoor urban worm bag, and today we are going to try and start a thing where we're going to see if I can treat this urban worm bag like a traditional trash can. But first, we're going to go ahead and harvest. This is going to be our fourth harvest. So far, we've harvested three times, and we've gotten 50 pounds of castings in there. And this is the, the little contraption that goes with it, goes right on the bottom here and has some buckles. But what I like to do is I like to use a mortar tray. This is just a tray that I picked up at one of those big box stores, and it is used to, you know, kind of mix cement or mortar, and it is just the perfect size to fit right under the urban worm bag, and I can see if there's any liquid coming out underneath. So first things we have to do when we harvest is we kind of got to beat it down a little bit. And what that does is that kind of takes out any air pockets, so the castings will just kind of come out. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part right here. There's a little bit of a contraption here that we just kind of unzip like that. And then we're going to open up almost like a little bladder here, this dark thing here. And we're just going to kind of scrape and let the castings come out. And it has been, I think it's been 58 days since we last harvested and we harvested like 22 pounds out of here. So we're going to see how much we can get. I'm only going to go for about 15 because as I look at it, I'm starting to see that stuff isn't quite broken down like I had hoped. But let's go ahead and get more out and then see where we're at. Now all I'm going to do is kind of take the castings that are from this part right here all the way up to about here. All right, and that should about do it. So now I'm just gonna take that string again and I'm gonna zip it up. Not really a zipper, but kind of a drawstring here. And then I take the little contraption and bring it all the way to the top. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. So you might have seen this come out. That's our temperature sensor. And here's the castings. They look pretty good. We do have some worms in here and we've got some bigger chunks that didn't get totally broken down. So we'll kind of go through those and we'll put those back in, but not bad for a harvest. This is going to be stored for a while. We're in December right now. So as they're in storage, they'll go ahead and break down the rest of the castings that are in here. But maybe we can tweak this bin to get it to where I can keep harvesting at the rate that I'm harvesting and kind of get away from some of this bigger stuff. So let's Let's go ahead and weigh this. So that was 16 pounds and what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the weight of the mortar tray and I'll give you the total that we have harvested this time and the total that we have harvested total in our forward harvests. So I'm just going to pull these kind of bigger chunks out. We'll put them back in and let's get to the top to start feeding. All right. So here were some of the big pieces that we pulled out of the vermicompost and not surprisingly, we've got some cranberries here. So I'll check and see when we put it in and see how long it has taken for us to put food in to it gets all the way down to castings. Maybe we need to adjust that. Like I said, it is December, so the worms may be a little bit slower than usual just because it's colder, but I think we might have got a partial answer to can this be used as a conventional trash can, and the answer is let's find out because what we're going to start doing is feed, and we'll put some of this shredded cardboard that you see here, but we're also going to put some of the big stuff, and we're going to see if we can get some regular vermicompost out of there. Now, the difference between worm castings and vermicompost is worm castings is almost entirely just just pure worm castings. And vermicompost is kind of what you see that we got out of this harvest. So let me kind of push this to the side. We're going to dig in and check on last feeding because the last time we were in here, we had a nasty smelling mess of pumpkin and pineapple from overfeeding. One of the things that we did was we mixed in some dry bedding because we had kind of a lot of liquid and we got some out of the bottom into that mortar tray. So we went ahead and gave them a pretty good feeding of tomato tops, tangerine peels, lettuce stalks, banana peels, some broccoli stems and blueberries along with some strawberries and it was a very spread out feeding so I don't expect to see it in here too much because that was 38 days ago and before our trip to Brazil what I did was I just came in here and kind of gave them another feeding in that one we had just kind of a normal amount of food scraps and I brushed over the bedding and put food on one side 
And then we brushed over the bedding to the other side and put food on that side, and then just kind of put some more bedding on top. And then I put all this big stuff that we see here. So let's go ahead and push this around and continue to dig in and see how we're doing now. The first thing I see as I dig in here is some great worms, like the one right by my thumb right there and some others. And there's a couple more there, but I'm seeing these cranberries. And the ones I'm seeing are the ones that are still full. You can kind of see they haven't burst their skin. So I'm going to try and burst the skin of any kind of cranberries that I see without hitting the executive producer who is right behind the cameras. So let's kind of dig around the edges and see what we've got. I think what's happening is I'm putting in a lot of cardboard, a lot of carbon, and I'm not seeing a lot of food. So I think what we can do based on that harvest is put in more food to carbon ratio. And I think that might help us get some more worm castings in our vermicompost. Let me put this over here to this side and we'll check over here. Now we do have a unique feeding that we're going to put in here. I did it a couple years ago and that is we're going to put in a banana flower. So go ahead and stick around to our feeding to find out what that looks like. Maybe you'll learn a little thing or two about how bananas actually grow. There we go. Lots more cranberries everywhere it seems. So while I was aerating, I came up with a little plan. I think I'm gonna kind of feed this in segments. So the first segment is gonna be that banana flower. So this right here is a banana flower after it has been frozen. It is typically bright purple. And what happens is these little parts right here, a hand of banana comes out. Now above this, there are lots of bananas. They're on my banana plant right now. And I'm hoping that we don't get a freeze anytime soon because they just kind of need to fatten up in order for us to pick them and be able to eat them. But these are kind of the juvenile bananas that are here and under each petal are more bananas just keep going down I don't know if I'll be able to get to it because it's frozen but each one of these is gonna have more and more bananas the first ones that pop out are really huge these are kind of tinier as the, the flower kind of grows down so what I've read is that if you cut off the bottom flower there then perhaps the sugars and all the material that goes into a banana will get more energy and more concentration if you take off the flower so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this right here. Now this is really dense. I'm going to see if I can kind of pull it a little bit, allow for the worms to get in because if we don't, they're going to have a tough time getting all the way to the center. And I think no matter what we do, this last little part is going to take a while. Now I did freeze it. So in theory, the cell walls of each of the individual cells of this flower have burst and it should kind of turn to mush. But there we go. I think the worms are really going to enjoy <laughs> this banana flower. So now we're just going to put some of this bedding around it. And one of the unique things about bananas are they pop up all their leaves and then through the same center they pop up their flower so once the flower comes out no more leaves come out so if you get a frost or a freeze and the banana plant leaves die there's no way for them to get any kind of sugars into the bananas and the bananas end up dying too so that's why you see me praying for you know a little bit warmer weather here in Tampa Florida so there we go we've got that we'll just put a little bit over here like this and then we'll add some of our feeding around the edges so let me kind of prep that real quick we have just some of our normal food scraps. Let's go ahead and dump that in. Looks like some banana peels, some celery. We've got some lettuce stalks. We've even got some Brussels sprouts. And I like to freeze all my food to help it break down physically. And this looks like maybe some... Arugula. Arugula. There we go. Got a big assist from the executive producer there. So we'll put that there. Maybe even cover it up with a little bit of this. Some of that. What are these called? Potato skins. Potato skins? Yeah, potato skins. Peels. Peels. Potato okay. peels. And then we've got some potato peels because it is, I think it's December 28th, and we had a great Christmas feast. So go ahead and put those in there. I love mashed potatoes. So we had some of those. And again, I'm just going to kind of spread it around here. Now I am going to need to cover all this up with bedding. So I'll try and put a little bit of a, a light load on it. And then finally, we got some banana peels for my mom, whose birthday is actually on Christmas. So we'll spread these out too. And the executive producer is probably not going to be happy with me because as usual, I am trying to overfeed just because I get a little bit excited when it comes time to feed my worms. So there we go. You are correct. So with every feeding, I like to add a little worm chow, and it's just a way for me to get more nutrients into the worms and the garden, and it helps me get rid of some of my 
What is this? Expired grains. Expired grains from the pantry. We are both coffee and tea drinkers, so we like to save our coffee grounds in tea grounds, and we just kind of put them in these containers. They dry out a little bit and sometimes even get mold. Then we just feed them to the worms. Those grinded up coffee beans are a great nutrient source for them and also for the garden. So I love processing all my food scraps through the worms. And this is just some eggshell grit. The worms have gizzards and this helps to break up the food. Kind of like a bird. So this is a pretty good spread out feeding. I'm not going to put that temperature gauge in here because it is winter and our highs are somewhere in the 60s and lows in the 50s. So I really don't need to monitor the temperature too much. But what we are going to do is we are going to add some of our bedding, kind of like a trash can. And I like to do this because believe it or not, I try to be a lazy worm farmer. And by that, I mean, I'm trying to get my worm bins to have kind of peak efficiency with the least amount of work from me. So if I can get to the point where I can just kind of throw all this stuff in here without really processing it, and then the worms turn it into worm castings and vermicompost, that will just make it so easy for me. So we're gonna add just a little bit of shredded cardboard in order to kind of bury the food that is in here. And I'm guessing some of you wondered where this was, and I did too. So I'm gonna put that like that right there. Definitely forgot to put the in there. So we'll put it in just like that. And then again, try and bury everything. So hopefully we are gonna learn a thing or two about the capacity of the worms to kind of eat this bedding that is just kind of collected as we go and not shredded or processed in any way. I'm not gonna add any kind of liquid to the top here because with this flap that kind of zips up and creates a lid, it gets some condensation on it. And we have been having kind of rainy days and I've noticed with our rainy days, we will sometimes get liquid in the bottom. So I think the capacity to hold liquid is kind of at its max for this worm bin. We'll just kind of see what happens. Now, next feeding when we come in here, obviously we're going to check on that banana flower, but I'm going to try and use no extra bedding because I think we have a lot in here. So hope you're having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing fantastic. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.